I, Wolf Chief, speak. This is my son, Little Wolf. I'm glad to know Wolf Chief and his son. I am a stranger here. I saw the shooting from my camp on the ridge. Who are you? Why are you in Indian territory? I am a messenger for the Great Spirit. This book is the medicine of peace and friendship for our Indian brothers. We do not want white man's medicine. Use it on the white men who need it more. But the medicine I bring will heal both your bodies and your spirit. In the past, your people have lived by hunting and war. War is wrong, and hunting is no longer enough. Indians are not farmers. But you can learn. I've been entrusted by the consulars of the great White Father in Washington to bring you seeds of wheat and corn adapted to this country for your use. We already have a treaty promising us beef for food. Today, those cattle were stolen. And this is not the first time. When this injustice is corrected, then I will listen to your story of the seeds. Where did you get the cattle? From the trading post of Bandus, the Indian agent. I'll report what I've seen and heard. Without guns, my braves are helpless. But there are white men who will sell guns for gold. If the horse soldiers do not protect this treaty, there will be war. Come, we will go home. For the Indian agent. Bandis? Yeah. He's inside. Thank you. Mr. Bandis? How do you do? What can I do for you? I'm William Van Oyster. I'm also known as Brother Van. You may have heard of me. Yes, indeed. Of course. I received a letter from Mr. Howland of the Indian Bureau in Washington. Good. Well, I hope he told you I wanted to help you with the Indians. But I'm afraid I bring you bad news. Bad news. The Sioux were attacked this morning, and all the cattle that you issued them were stolen. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. So it's happened again. I was told it was nothing new. Who told you? Wolf Chief, after the raid. <sighs> Trouble never seems to stop. But uh, I didn't know the Blackfoot had started raiding this far north again. Oh, these weren't other Indians, Mr. Bandis. The men who stole these cattle were white men. Did Wolf Chief tell you that, too? No, I saw the attack. I was camped for the night near the ravine. White men, eh? Tell me, uh, did you see who they were? Well, no, they were masked. I wouldn't recognize them anyway. I'm a stranger here. In his letter, Mr. Howland also said that you're a brother, not an ordained minister but that you're dedicating your life to missionary work among the needy, especially the Indians. So that's true. I'm interested in teaching them the fallacies of war and violence and the benefits to be derived from working their land. I believe you brought some samples of seed? Yes, of corn and wheat adapted to this country. With plenty of flour and cornmeal, they won't starve even without government beef. However, it might be hard to persuade them. When I talked to Wolf Chief, he insisted that first the treaty provisions of beef be met, and he warned of trouble otherwise. Ah, the situation is indeed bad. This border country is full of outlaws ready to prey on these Indians who have been entrusted to my care. We have no law, and alone I'm helpless. But it's the Army's job to see the treaties enforced. I'm sure whoever's in command will act. After all, I'm not just repeating a rumor. I was an eyewitness. You may be right. Follow the road to Deadwood. It's about 18 miles. They'll direct you to the fort from there. Well, thank you. I'll see you again. Of course. I'm sure we'll be able to work together on your project. Psalm singer is going to make Indians into nice Christian farmers, is he? <laughs> Not if I can help it. McGee, you and Corbin make tracks.
Always run your luck this thin, mister. Thanks for helping me. I guess you saved my life. No guess about it. I did. Can I have a look at that? How'd they get you in this bind? You lose your gun? No, I don't use one. You crazy enough to travel this country without a weapon? Well, that'll have to do for now. Who were those gun rannies? Well, outlaws, probably. Bandits, the agent said this territory was full of them. Bandits, eh? I saw an attack by white men on an Indian cattle drive. I reported it to him, and he directed me to the army fort. I was on my way there when this happened. I see. You a gambler? No, I'm a missionary. Preacher? You pretty young for a preacher, aren't you? Uh, I guess we better get mounted. Those fellas might have friends and come back. Clifton McGee got shot, so we had to pull out. Some other fellow got into the fracas. Who? I don't know. He was too far away. Are you sure he didn't get close enough to recognize you? He was a quarter of a mile away. He'll be all right. Tell him to keep out of sight for a few days. People see that bullet hole in him, they'll ask questions. Mr. Bandis? There's something we've been wanting to ask you. Go ahead. We've done a few jobs for you now, and we figure we got a right to know. When you hired our guns, you said you needed protection here at the post in case of Indian trouble. But the way things have been going looks to us like you aim to start an Indian war. So how do you figure to gain by that? You like your job, Corbin? So far, so good, but I'm asking you what's coming up. Bigger jobs, better pay. Doing what? Working on one of the biggest cattle spreads in the territory. You ask, am I going to start a war? I am. But the cavalry will do the fighting. And when it's all over and these Indians are wiped out, this whole country will be open to anyone with guts enough to walk in, take it over, and hold it afterward. Hold it with guns. That's us. Right. We're with you, Mr. Bandis. We're with you all the way, but uh, how do you figure to put them Indians on the warpath if you can't even starve them into fighting, huh? There are other ways. friends. Howdy. He just stopped a bullet. Bullet? Myra? Myra? Better come around here. You better get some bandages and things. This young fellow's been shot. Oh my goodness. Was it engines or an accident? An accident. He didn't duck fast enough. Now you just lean right back there, son, and we'll have you fixed right in no time. Lynn, where are you? Right here, Mother. You can trust my wife, son. She's the best nurse in the valley. <laughs> How'd it happen? Well, it wasn't really an accident. A couple of hard cases tried to hold them up, I guess. Well, it's too bad. By the way, my name's Sutter, Owen Sutter. Glad to know you. My name's... Link Prescott. You located in Deadwood, Mr. Prescott, or just traveling through? Just traveling. What's your business? Excuse my curiosity, but with that two-gun rig, you look ready for trouble. What's your job? I'm handy at a lot of jobs. Dab on some of that iodine, Lynn. This will sting quite a bit. You'd better stay with us for a few days, son, to light arm feels better. 
Well, thank you, sir, but I'd like to reach the fort before sundown. Fort? I have some important information for the commander. There. I hope it didn't hurt too much. I didn't feel a thing. Well, if you mean Captain North, we could invite him to supper. He's, uh, well, a friend of the family, sort of. Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> and Lynn can bake a pigeon pie. She's already learned that the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better sit with us, too, Mr. Prescott. Oh, thanks. Just to keep the parson here from eating all that pigeon pie. You're a preacher? That's right. The Reverend William Van Arsdale, also known as Brother Van, all the way from Pennsylvania, to make Christians out of the Indians. <laughs> and I dare say it'll be a lot easier than converting some of the white folk I've seen. It's nice to know we have a minister in this wilderness. I'd say the only one in 200 miles. May I uh, call you Brother Van? It has a nice, friendly sound. I wish you would. How did you come by that name? An old frontier guide heard me preach in a saloon. He said my full name was too long to remember, so the congregation voted to shorten it. You preached in a saloon? Well, it was Sunday, and it was raining. There was no other place, and uh, we did have a crowd. How'd you get started on this preaching business? When I was 15 on my aunt's farm in Pennsylvania, I watched the Battle of Gettysburg. When I saw those boys dying before they had a chance at life, I knew I wanted to spend my time trying to help men live before they died. You should have stayed back where you came from. Words are going to get you no place out here, unless you back them with a gun. I don't believe that. Well, you'll find I'm right. And stay away from the Indians. You talk like a man who lives by the gun, Mr. Prescott. I find it's a sure way to live. Thanks for the supper. You're welcome. I got a long way to ride. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. I'd back out of here if I were you, while I could still walk and talk. Now, he's right on one point. Indian problems are the business of the Army, not yours, Mr. Van Orsdell. I'm grateful for the information you've given me this evening, but let me handle it. Well, in view of my letter of authorization from the Indian Bureau, you can't mean that as an order, Captain. Well, not an order, advice. The Bureau in Washington is a long way from the frontier. This is like a lot of their other theories, fine but impractical. Indians have lived by fighting and hunting as far back as you can trace them in history. They feel that work is degrading. I think they can be taught better. Well, you better go slow until you learn the ways of this country. Brother Van, if it ever comes to a showdown between you and Mr. Prescott, I want to be there. Showdown? His six guns against your Bible. I'm betting on you. <laughs> Sacks of sugar. Six sacks of sugar. Hmm. That's a load. Here's the list. All right, eh? Going out fast, isn't it? I better requisition some more supplies from the government right away. <laughs> yeah, them Indians sure eat their heads off. <laughs> sure you get the government markings off all goods left over before you sell anything. Of course. He's sure putting a lot of distance between him and Texas. Wonder what he's doing in debt. I don't know. You could use him, though, that is, if his gun's fire. Ah. Hey, Prescott! You 
call me? I did. My name is Bandus. I'm the Indian agent for this territory. I heard of you. Everybody has heard of your reputation with a six-gun. You uh, looking for a job? It happens I am. You got something in mind? For a certain kind of man. But he'd have to be good. Say, uh, as good as this. What do you think you're doing? Like that? Yeah, like that. Step down, friend. You've uh, got the job if you want it. Uh, it depends. Much as I regret it, I'm afraid there's going to be an Indian war. I'll need reliable fighting men to protect the agency in case of Indian raids. That sounds all right. What's it pay? Sixty a month, board and room. And a bonus and gold if you get the job done. I'll take it. Fine. Boys, meet Link Prescott. Zard Corbin, Pete Lohman, Blood Fisher, the men you'll be working with. That was pretty fancy shooting, Prescott, but it wasn't funny. By the way, uh, you didn't happen to be up around the Buttes yesterday morning, did you? What Buttes? Come on across the street, Prescott. Have a drink. Thanks. I gotta take it from Bandis. So help me, I'm gonna get even with that other show off. You just wait and see. Let me know what you want on your tombstone first. Whose side are you on? That guy nearly shot my nose off. Better leave any drawn down on Prescott to Bandis. And I ain't so sure about him. This is where we'll build our church. We'll say to all who pass, God is here. We want our children to grow up in it so that his word will be a light on their path. It will be a place of refreshment, of new hope. Son, you waded right in and got both feet wet in high style. Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Mr. Sutter. We're having a party at our place next Sunday afternoon to raise funds for your church. Of course, since you're the guest of honor, you're invited. Well, thank you. I'll be there. Especially if you're going to do the cooking. <laughs> I'll do my share. Come yes. along, Mother. Keep twisting old Nick's tail, son. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Brother Ben. Goodbye, Mr. Sutter. Goodbye, Brother Ben. Thanks. Mr. Bowers. Mrs. Party. Bowers. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Brother Ben. Bye, Bye Mary. Bye. I thought Captain North might be here. Well, they have a service at the fort on Sundays, and Captain North leads them. I see. Well, I suppose you'll be assisting him soon. What? Well, am I wrong about you two? <laughs> mm, maybe yes, maybe no. Nothing official. Uh, have you seen anything more of Mr. Prescott? No, I haven't, and I've been looking for him. If you see him, would you please tell him that I... Never mind. We'll see you at the party on Sunday. All right, Lynn. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.
not be in a mob can, huh? Get a hold of him and tie him up. Why tie him up? We're taking him into Bandis. What's the hurry? After that chase, I need a drink. <laughs> Come on, pig. I got dust in my throat, too. Prescott, you're such an all-fired trick shot, I'll make a bet with you that you can't shoot off one of his braids without singeing his scalp. You're gonna cripple him? A little around the edges. Then I'm gonna kill him. Bandit said to bring him in for trial. Can't try a dead man. Why don't you smarten up, Prescott? The only way Bandit wants him is dead. Now move aside. Hey, pig, you started the fire. Indians burning white men, ain't you? Be kind of fun to see it happen the other way around. White men aren't savages. Untie them. Grab them. Preacher. It was him that started the stampede. You're going to burn that Indian alive. Burning's too good for that dirty horse thief. Carvin! Man's a friend of Captain North. All the valley people are his friends. Lay a hand on him and they'll run you out of the country. Well, he ain't walking away without answering for what he done. He helped a criminal to escape and... Well, that's against the law. And take him into Bandus. See if he wants to prefer charges. Yeah. Yeah, Bandus will fix him up. Get on your horse. Don't lose those beads Little Wolf gave you. They'll get you clean through the Indian country. You saw me release that Indian? What of it? I sure hate to be trading on the Sabbath, but there's no help for it with all the work I got stacked up next week. Mother wants two sacks of flour. She's breaking a whole wagon load full of cakes and stuff for the party we're having for Brother Van next Sunday. All the settlers are going, I suppose. Why, of course they are. What's that? Why? Brother Van and Mr. Prescott. 
glad to see you again. Where's the Indian? Oh, <laughs> we had him, but this is all we got left. He got away, so uh, we brung this preacher here instead. A bunch of wild horses stampeded down on us. He sneaked in and cut the Indian loose. They had him tied to a tree, burning him alive. Why, this is serious, Bandis. It sure is. These men were sent out to bring in Wolf Chief's son for stealing one of my horses. Now that he's gotten away with this, you think he can get away with anything. Unfortunately, as you know, Sutter, Indians are like children. They must be disciplined. Yes, but not burned alive. Oh, why, Mr. Sutter, <laughs> we wouldn't do a thing like that. Yeah, sure, I admit we had the Indian tied up, but we were just going to fetch him back into Deadwood and have him stand lawful trial like Mr. Bandis warned. I saw the fire myself. Oh, but that was started accidental. I was going to put that fire out myself, and wasn't I, Lawman? Yeah. You see? <laughs> but then them horses chased us off. That's not true, Corbin. I'm certain Van Arsdell only did what he thought was right. Let him go. You come in, I'll get that flower for you. <laughs> Hello, then. Hello. Aren't you tired of horseback riding? Wouldn't you like to ride back with us? Thank you. You're a pleasant sight today, Miss Sutter. I'm sorry, I can't say the same for you, Mr. Prescott. I see you've added the art of torture to your talent with the gun. Well, Lynn, is that... stopped by to water my horse at their place. Quite a hand with the women, Corbin. Of course, you wouldn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, but you are. <laughs> I must tell you something, Lynn, I wanted to tell you before. Link Prescott saw me turning the Indian loose. He could have shot us both, but he didn't. If you had to pick yourself a private guardian angel, why did you have to pick the devil? <laughs> it's recorded the devil's a fallen angel. Perhaps this one hasn't fallen too far to be pulled back. I doubt it. Mr. Sutter, I wonder if it would be all right if he came to the party Sunday. Oh. Yes, I guess it's all right with me. But it's not all right with me. It'd be a chance to know him better. I know all I want to. Do you, Lynn? Well, I'd have to think about it. I don't know who'd dance with a man like that. tells me the party's been a big success. Anyway, it's going to help buy nails and paint and plaster for our new meeting house. Uh, everything that you women baked and sewed has been bought, and I'm turning over to Brother Van nearly a hundred dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Thank you. I must admit, when I first came to this territory, I was very lonely but not anymore. With the Lord's help and your help, I can build our church. Maybe many churches, schools, and even hospitals. Thank you very much. I must admit, Mr. Prescott, that you dance very well for a... Then, huh? I wasn't going to say that. But... It fits. You know, 
Miss Lynn, when you get to know me better, you'll find out that um... I have no intention of getting to know you any better than I do. Don't be too sure. People who claim they know what they're doing are usually mistaken. <laughs> you should smile more often. You know, it makes you prettier than... It's true. You should tell the truth about other things. Such as? Why did you help Brother Van and Little Wolf the other day? Van tell you that? Yes. Don't listen to him. He's mistaken. You're certain? Positive. <laughs> seen much of you this afternoon. Well, I have been pretty busy. I've noticed. Why'd you invite him? Brother Van asked me to. I see. Look here, Lynn. Vandis hires some pretty tough characters. Gunman. Thinks he needs him in case of Indian trouble. Somehow I can't put Prescott in the same class with Corbin and the others. He's one of them. Lynn, in another year I will have completed my tour of duty in the West. I thought we could plan to marry them, go back east and live where it's civilized. I like living on the frontier. It's exciting to watch it grow. And one day it'll be as civilized as Washington or Philadelphia. It'll take a century. You're not going to make me wait that long, are you? I might. But then again, I might. Ellis, look. The Bowers Ranch is in that direction. Father, Mr. Bowers, come quick. What is it? A smoke over there. Could be a fire on the Bowers Ranch. Andy, it's our ranch that's burning. You stay here, Mary. I'll see about it. Oh, Andy, be careful, please. Some of you men, come on. Oh, our home. Everything we have. Maybe it isn't your home, Mary. But if it is, they may get there in time. in the house. Give me a couple of those. separate and search. My guess is we'd better not. This country looks too good for an ambush. Now, how do you figure this raid, Prescott? Well, it looks like a war party, but... Well, we'll pick up a detail and get over to the agency. I'll go on ahead. Tell Bandish you're coming. And tell him to post a strong guard. Well, if it isn't 
Fantastic and the Lady Affair. Home kind of early, ain't you, Prescott? Party over? Well, if it ain't the dancing dude, still get the dancing slippers on? Ha 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 ha! Hey, that's my rifle. Leave that alone. Can't pass up a chance to shoot a man in the back, can you, Corbin? Somebody shot? Little rancher by the name of Andy Bowers. Meant nothing to him. Except it made a good target. Now the army will move against the Indians. That's good. <laughs> What's the matter, Prescott? <laughs> Get up, Peg, get up. Hell, Megan. Little Wolf's bow and arrows gave you a great idea, didn't they, Bendis? I liked it. I thought you hired my gun to help protect this agency in case of an Indian war. <laughs> I didn't know you were trying to start that war. Why not? It's coming anyway, so the sooner the better. I didn't hire out for cold-blooded murder. Maybe you didn't know it, but you did. And what are you going to do about it? I'm quitting. Get this straight. I got hundreds of head of cattle stashed away just waiting to start the biggest spread in the territory. Government cattle? All right, government cattle. Maybe you could wreck the whole works, but you won't. When you walked in here, you checked into a big game. And you're not checking out until the finish. Win or lose. That's where you're wrong, Bandis. I'm through now. All right. If that's the way you want it. You're through now. I'll finish him. Wait a minute. Listen. No more shots. Riders coming. Get him in the shed. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, Johnny and Miss Fern. Afternoon, Captain Knight. Prescott, tell me what happened. It's bad business. It's always bad business when Indians go on the war path. They probably won't stop at one rate. We heard a shot. Anything wrong? Uh, one of the boys shot a snake in the corral. It's hard to believe the Sioux would act this way after all I've tried to do for them. Be ready if they show up here. What are you going to do, Captain? Well, I've telegraphed for orders. I'll probably proceed into Indian country and round up the hostiles. In the meantime, I'm here to find out what you know about it. I? What could I know? Well, you know Wolf Chief and his people better than I do. Can you put your finger on any of them that have shown signs of rebellion? Well, there are a lot of hotheads in the tribe. And the ringleader is the chief's son, the man you prevented our bringing in. I'd say he was behind your red. I can't believe that. I'd like to go to Wolf Chief and tell him what's happened. I'm sure he'll help. Even if it's his son? I know it wasn't, Mr. Sutter. It'd be a white man's death to set foot alone in Indian country at this time. Just a minute. Little Wolf gave me these beads when I saved his life. And then ensure me safe passage through Indian territory. But uh, if this is an army matter... I don't know, Bandis. Maybe Van's right. And it prevents serious trouble if he can persuade Wolf Chief to come to Deadwood and bring the renegades with him. I know he'll do it. All right, go ahead. You should contact the Indians tomorrow and be in Deadwood with the Chief the next day. I'll pack a saddle roll and leave right away. Is Prescott around? Prescott? Uh, why, no, he rode on into Deadwood.
It was out cold. Hey, his horse is gone. Get after him. Spread out. He can't be far away. You two look around back. If you see anything, give a yell. What's all the ruckus here? We're looking for Link Prescott. You hiding him? Why would I be hiding Prescott? What's he done? Bowman, let's take a look inside. Oh, wait a minute. Look here, Corbin. I asked you what he's done. He tried to kill me. Mr. Prescott, we'll Bowman, help the others look around outside. What's in that room? That's my daughter's room. Yeah. You keep out of it. Get your hands on me. How dare you try to break into my room? Uh, I'm looking for Link Prescott. You must be crazy to think he's in there. Oh? Uh -huh. He's a friend of yours, ain't he? <laughs> I'm not in the habit of making friends with gunmen, Mr. Corbin. And I wouldn't lift a finger to help one of your bunch. I ain't so sure about that. While you're hanging around here, Prescott's probably gotten miles away. No sign of nothing. Nothing. Now listen to me, Corp. Shut up! If I find out he's been here, it's gonna be rough on all of you. Remember that. Killed him. Bullet ripped through the muscle here. He's lost an awful lot of blood. You'll have to do some fancy doctoring this time, Mother. I'll get some things. Please, lie down. We'll take care of you. I can't stay here. I'll get you in trouble. I have to go. Oh, no, no, you wouldn't get half a mile. Look, Mr. Sutter, you got a place you could hide me till I get better? Where I can stand a chance if they show. I got a lot of business to take care of around here. The Fandis? They're murderers. Corvin shot Andy Bowers. How is he? The doc says he'll pull through. But the Indians did that. Not the Indians. Bandis men. 
They're planning on starting an Indian war. They will unless they're stopped. Why do you say they when you're one of them? Not anymore. I quit. That's why they tried to kill me. Look, Miss Lynn. I don't shoot a man in the back. That old mine opening up on the ridge. You could hide a horse there if you wanted to. Yeah, that's the place. You can see the whole country. Good. you saved the life of my son, Little Wolf. Why are you here? Last night there was a raid. A rancher was wounded. They found arrows. Captain North thinks that some of your people did the crime. If you don't want war, he asks that you come to Deadwood and bring the evildoers with you. If I keep faith, how can I be sure the white man will also keep faith? This is a book of the white man's God. I swear on this book that you will be treated with honor. Ride back, tell the captain. If this is so, I will find the guilty ones. I will bring them to Deadwood tomorrow when the sun is high overhead. Beginning to look like Wolf Chief lied to you, Van Orzel. You'd have no reason to, Bandis. Captain. Are these the guilty men? No. I have learned there were no Indian raiders. None of my people left Indian territory. How is it then that we found arrows at the ranch which was attacked? The bow and arrows of Little Wolf, my son, were taken from him by the white man who tried to burn him for stealing a horse, which he did not do. That fire was started accidental, like I said. What happened to those arrows, Bandis? Back at the agency. White man used arrows of Little Wolf. How can he say such a thing? As if white men would prey on their own kind. I do not lie. White man lies. Get me those arrows, Bandis. I'm holding you prisoner, Wolf Chief, until I find out who's lying. Captain North, you can't do this. I promised him safety. Nothing would happen. I'm sorry, Van. I must handle this my way. Put the chief under arrest. Take him inside the warehouse and keep him under lock and key. Mr. Reed, we'll bivouac here for the night. Yes, sir. Have one of your men ride to the agency and get those arrows. Have them here by morning. Very well, Captain. better. My appetite's back. That's good. <laughs> 
Another day and I'll be able to ride. One time I'd have run out. Not cared whether bandits won or lost. What changed you, Link? You? And that kid? Brother Van. You know, when I first met him, I thought he was crazy. Big, strong kid like that wasting his time preaching. But he's right. This country can stand a lot more what he's selling. I'm glad, Link. Lynn, I've been thinking about you. You and me, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Yes, Link? Well, what I mean is... I'd like to quit the kind of life I've been leading. And settle down? Mm-hmm. You'd say the word. That's up to you, isn't it? You know what I mean. Do I? Sure you do. All right, Link. You want anything more in town, Myra? Now's the time to think of it. Lynn! Where's the house? We weren't killed. Captain North holding Wolf Chief prisoner. Well, why did they take Lynn? They say Lynn's North's girl. They're gonna kill her if he doesn't turn the chief loose. I gotta get help. I gotta point north. Tell, tell Prescott. North. The Indians kidnapped Lynn. They say they're gonna kill her if you don't let Wolf Chief go. You gotta turn that Indian loose. Now, as long as we've got Wolf Chief, we have protection against the Indians doing anything to Lynn. But Captain North, he can't just sit here and let time run out on these people. Lieutenant, assemble the platoon. We're returning to the post at once. Send a courier ahead with a message. All squadrons will be ready to move out at once. Yes, sir. So the war is on. It may be, Mr. Bandis. In the meantime, I'm holding you strictly responsible for Wolf Chief, and I expect you to produce those arrows when I return. Don't give up hope. Right. In the meantime, I'm holding you strictly responsible, he says. Make sure you guard the chief well. These townspeople get wind of what's going on. They'll break down the doors and hang that in. If that happens, Captain North never would get that son of Biddy out alive, and nothing on Earth could stop a war then. You're as sharp as a tack, Pick. Yeah. I know how you feel. I feel the same way myself. We all do. But I feel responsible to Captain North. They ain't let the Sutter girl go, have they? No, it's a terrible tragedy. But it's too late to save her now. All we can do is pray that she died quickly. But, of course, you all know that's too much to expect from these savages with their awful torches, what they do to a pretty woman. Then get aside, Bandus. We want Wolf Chief. No, I've given my word to guard him. What happened to Lynn Sutter could have happened to your own daughter, but Wolf Chief must be made to pay by due course of law. This is our law right here. Yeah. Please, friends. Look, Bandus, we're the people that live in this country. We show these engines we mean business, they'll stop this raiding and killing. I wish I could turn the chief over to you. They'll probably take him back east to try him, where the courts don't understand the situation out here. He may even go free, but... We're going in, Bandus. What are you going to do to stop us? Shoot down white men? No, I couldn't do that. I'm powerless. All right, then. Come on, men. Get the wagon. All right. Uh...
listen to me, all of you. Give me all of that wagon, Van Orsdale. No, you're making a bad mistake. We know what we're doing. No, you don't. You've been forced into it. Ah. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. Pass, then. There's no reason to believe Lynn Sutter isn't still alive. And she will be as long as this man lives. I believe if Wolf Chief is released, he'll set her free. Ah. Yeah. What do you believe? If you were told Lynn Sutter is dead, it was only to promote this lynching. And we've all been wrong about a lot of things that have happened here recently. Anyone siding with the Indians has found himself in trouble. Because certain men would like to bring on an Indian war. Man, where'd you get that? Twice I've been attacked because I've tried to keep peace with the Indians. The first time because I went for the cavalry for help. The second time because I tried to save this man's son from being burned alive. Now I know everything was done by the same men. Right. When Wolf's chief said that his son's arrows were taken and used in the attack against the Bowers Ranch, he was telling the truth. Indians didn't use those arrows, and Indians didn't shoot Andy Bowers either. White men did that. Hired by a white man to drive the Indian from their lands. I'm talking about bandits and the men who work for him. What? That's a pretty fancy spiel, Van Arsdell. I doubt if I've ever heard a wilder one. You can prove what you're saying. Give me time and I'll prove it. There's <laughs> a man whose mind is so warped with fanatical love for the Indian that he'd throw his own breed to the wolves. Yeah. You'd better leave then, Oswald, and fast. You've been warned to keep on your side of the hill for the last time. Glad you're here. I didn't know you were well enough to ride. I'm all right. Listen, Bandis tried to lynch Wolf Chief. He got away, and Bandis and his men are after him. Get your horse. Take that road. Carpenter, come with me. Which one shall we follow? Bandus. If the others catch the thief, they won't kill him without Bandus. Somebody's coming. Get under cover with a carbine. Dead man, Prescott. Corbin's in the cover with a carbine. When he gets a clear shot, you are dead. You got 
one chance, Bandis. Busted arm. They'll pick him up later. <laughs> well, the chief has agreed to release Lynn. I'm going with him to pick her up. Now, you get Sutter. Then contact Captain North in his column. They'll probably be someplace between the fort and the Indian village. Indians won't be there, of course. They'll be back up in the hills. Tell the captain to wait there for me. You think it'll be all right? Well, he's got to take his word for it. Nothing else we can do. Us. Link said the village would be broken up. I'll feel better when the column catches up. Well, I'm sure it's better this way. If we had come in full strength, we might keep them away. Now listen. It's Liam! She's safe, Mr. Sutter. I guess you heard about Bandis. Van got a confession from Corbin. He admitted to the raid on the Bowers Ranch. I'm at your service if you need me, Captain. I'll call on you. I guess I better congratulate you, too. Thanks. Thank you. 